Matthew Wheaton here with the Register Mail. I'm here with Galesburg High School football coach Michael Washaball. Coach, you guys were 1-8 last year. Opened the season off Friday against Dunlap. I know that you definitely want a better record than 1-8. What are some goals for your team this season? Yeah, I mean, right off the bat, I think physical play at every position is kind of key. We have to be able to win the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. Uh, my transition back to doing O-line and D-line, I think, I hope would help it. You know, just the demanding of practice, things like that. Um, but, but obviously playing physical at every position, and then we just keep talking about being one and all, you know, taking each week, respecting all opponents, and, uh, you know, the scoreboard will tell us each week. All right, Coach. Uh, Dunlap, uh, what's going to be the key key for you guys on, on Friday? Well, Coach Gazzle does a great job. Um, you know, they're a playoff, perennial playoff team. They're going to show up prepared. They're going to play physical. They're not going to make mistakes. So it's going to be a playoff type atmosphere, much like the scores have been, you know, outside of the one year that they got us pretty handily, 36 to 8. But, uh, you know, they're going to be physical. They're going to play. They have weapons on offense. They always play great team defense in their 4 3 scheme. Um, you know, they're just going to be coached up. It's going to be a playoff level game. Okay, coach, I have some reader submitted questions here for you. You want to just read those, read those off and answer those along the way here? Okay, so how do you feel with the increased awareness of concussion and head trauma in football at the high school level? Um, you know, I think it's an important part of the game. Um, there, there's just a lot of things that come out, you know, and especially with a lot of the CTE, um, things that come with NFL. Like, again, you have to remember that the body types play in the league in the NFL, you know, those are, those are freak athletes that have lifted their entire life. Like, you know, every single hit at that level is a train collision, very much like, you know, college football. You know, those do happen at the high school level, but they're, they're not as much. And then as you go even farther down, like to, to youth football and then junior high, they're even less. Um, can they happen? Of course. Um, so, you know, just protective measures. The IHSA does a great job. You know, trainers have to be um, present on game day um, to be able to release people, be able to evaluate them. Um, we do baseline testing um, here at Galesburg. So every year a kid gets baseline tested through our athletic director and athletic trainer. Um, so they have a baseline test and they're able to tell um, and do test uh, w whether the kids are ready mentally and physically ready able to return to play and things like that. Um, our AD Eric Matthews has done a great job about really overhauling our equipment. We're up to 40 helmets right now that have sensors. So the ITT Rydell system, it built in the helmets. So our trainer every single day has a Palm Pilot that, that goes through activation of hits, whether it's a, you know, a, a four percentile hit, so very, very low, or all the way up to a 99th percentile hit. Um, it, it makes him aware of that. We're able to plug that data in. So we're able to check track almost every single hit um, that a kid would take during the week, you know, which is, which is huge. Along with that, the IHSA has put in to where you can't have more than 90 minutes of uh, a thud or more contact in a week, you know, which we were, you know, right at. I mean, we weren't, we weren't going two straight hours of, you know, old school Oklahoma drill or things like that. Um, but there has to be a part in practice of it being physical. Um, but, but the IHSA put in a lot of regulations with that. You know, you can't play in two games on the same night. That's a new rule this year. You can't play in back-to-back -back days. Also, after you play a game, you can't be in a padded practice the day before or after. So there's just a lot of things. Um, you know, I think the game is, is safer than it's ever been, um, but there's a lot of things that we personally have done as well with that. We've also bought guardian caps for our junior high, so all 75 junior high, 7th and 8th graders we have out. Um, guardian caps just is kind of like a, a, a helmet sleeve that fits over the top and it's supposed to reduce all 33% of all 95th percentile and above hits. You know, so it's just that extra safeguard. All the kids wear that um, during during contact and practice as well as games in those lower level games. You know, and my long-term goal, you know, hopefully in two to three years we can flip it to where every kid at the high school would have a, a sensor in their helmet that we're able to track every single kid um, as well as have guardian caps on those high school kids. Okay, reader question number two is? Okay, how do you keep the kids safe while keeping the game fun? You know, I think it's all about your practice, how the way you practice, um, you know, the way that we fit up is, is what they call in USA football thud contact. Um, so a lot of leg injuries, especially in the box, like leg whips and things like that, that really get guys' knees. I mean, you see them on game times, I know, and some are, some are very hard to avoid. But the way that you practice, you're practicing full speed. You're not torquing guys to the ground up front, offensive line or defensive line-wise. All of your fits into the tackle, you know, that's what they call thud contact, is where you shoot your tackle and you're bringing your feet and you're wrapping up and stopping penetration by the running back or, or a catch, you're fitting it up. But, you know, just keeping guys off the ground, I think, really, really cleans that up. You know, and then just every single day, um, D-line, outside backer, inside backer, or DB, there's some sort of tackle progression or tackling thing built into to what we do, you know, so kids are getting daily instruction on that, you know, all the way up until week nine, week 14, you know, if we're able to continue playing the state championship game, you're just continuing refining that. And then hopefully when they get into games, you know, they're able to carry that over. Okay, uh, we have another reader question there for you, Coach. Okay, how different are safety measures compared to 10 years ago? 
Um, you, you can know, so just explain that you were you also played. Um, maybe talk a little bit about your background. You you played football for for Knoxville and went on to Mama's College. So how has that changed from when you your playing days? Um, you know. I wouldn't say that there's a ton different. The HSA has done a great job. I think a lot of the rules, it does handcuff a little bit if you don't have numbers, but I think the rules are in there for people that possibly could abuse it. But, you know, the, 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 the recovery day, you know, I think is something, you know, not making a guy go back-to-back -back days like they play a Friday, turn around, play a Saturday. Like, I think that's, you know, reasonable, especially guys that play high minutes. Um, you know, the, the contact one, I think 90 minutes is a little low, especially for developing football adversity. Again, you can tow the line right up to that. But, but when kids are learning how to tackle, block, like you need some thud periods that might extend more than 90 minutes. Um, you know, so I think that, that that those things, you know, it's good and bad, you know, with every decision. But the IHSA has done a great job with that. You know, equipment, there's not one kid in our high school um, or junior high for that matter that doesn't have a five-star helmet. So, you know, it depends where you're at, but the commitment here at Galesburg is, is to put the kids in the best equipment possible. Don't put kids in any sort of equipment that would put them into a a negative situation, you know, and that's all just the demeanor and approach that a school district has towards their program and towards the game. Okay, uh, another another regional question there for you. Okay, any extra preparation for what looks to be a really tough schedule this year? Well, A, recruit more kids out, which um, was an issue last year, you know, as you start going through uh, through playing, you know, I would consider Geneseo a playoff team last year, they're four and five, but eight of our nine games were playoff mentality games last year. You know, you need depth. Um, you know, just from the day-to-day -day grind, from injuries, from eligibilities, like just all of the above, you know, you have to have competition A at every single position. Because if you only got one starter and there's nobody pushing them, like you're never gonna get that kid's best performance. So I think we have to be able to do what we're doing, you know, raise numbers to where we're at a 6A level, not just a Western Illinois small school mentality of get guys out, but we have to be able to match Chatham, Glenwood if we draw them in the playoffs. Or if we go up to the Chicago suburbs, like we have to be able to match those 6A teams. So, so A, you know, I think we have to get guys out. Uh, Preparation-wise, we have to get our guys in hitting shape. You know, there's a couple guys up front that are going to play both ways and, and definitely be coming close to 100 snaps. You know, playing 100 snaps at, at receiver and DB is a lot different from playing 100 snaps from guard to D tackle. Um, just being in hitting shape, um, which I think is, you know, off-season preparation with lifting, not getting gaps in training, and kind of all those things. So, you know, train hard, get 12 months of lifting, get guys out so there's competition and depth. Um, you know, and then you just roll the dice. Okay, we have another reader question for you. Yep, I think it's the last one. How is the varsity depth? Are you deeper in skill positions or line play? Um, is, or is there a good balance of both? Um, so I would say, you know, just off the top of our 46-man varsity roster, we probably have more depth naturally at the skill position. Um, we have a big influx of skill guys at the sophomore level that, that kind of help fill that out. Um, so the competition, you know, at, at our at receiver at quarterback, which we didn't have a ton of depth at last year, you know, there's guys there that, that are competing. Um, up front, you know, I feel comfortable with where we're at, you know, top end talent and things, and we're trying to always cultivate that depth. You know, we need to have linemen number six and seven on the offensive side. You know, we probably need to be about at least six deep um, on the defensive line. Um, so, you know, just kind of where we're sitting here entering week one, you know, I feel pretty good about our depth, but, you know, you have two guys go, go down and possibly one of those guys being a one-way guy, like you can start running into some issues, you know, so you just got to try to keep guys healthy and, you know, it's a week-to-week -week thing in football. It's a contact sport. Anything else you want to add about the game on Friday, about the season ahead, Coach? You know, I'm excited to uh, to see our kids toe the line. There's a lot of guys. I think we have 17 seniors. They were all part of it last year, um, you know, which was the hardest season of my career. You know, I'm just excited to see uh, our kids get a loose, you know, and then hopefully end up on the winning side for all the work that they've put in, the leadership they've shown, and, and really bringing around those those younger guys. All right, that was Galesburg High School football coach Michael Washbaugh. I'm Matthew Wheaton. If you have any questions for Coach next week, shoot them to the Register Mail Facebook page, and we'll see if we can get them answered. Thank you.